Does somebody, and then I heard off the distance, does somebody remember me? Remember me. Who remembers me? And I was thinking, man, that's those plants and animals, the ones that we've forgotten as a people, that we don't recognize. How many remember the smells? How many remember that connection that we've had? Thousands of years of connection to these <laughs> brothers and sister beings, and we don't remember them. It's housed in the Center for Native American Studies at Northern Michigan University. We have 25 research subjects and foods that are indigenous to the Great Lakes region. How will people find their food? Hunting, fishing, gathering, foraging, gardening, purchasing, trading, and sharing. Because that's so important for us as Anishinaabe people. As you start to look at what's available in the market, you find that they don't serve a whole lot of what our ancestors ate around here. The reason why it's called the decolonizing diet project and not the decolonized is that very fact that you cannot simply cut yourself off from things that have been colonized. You can try your hardest, which is what we're doing, to get back to a, a, a place in your diet that's much closer to what our ancestors ate, but to really get back, it's impossible. I would, I would propose that it's just impossible to get back there because of the contaminations of our water systems, our plants, and our animals. Even if you go out and shoot a deer today, those deer are eating plants that have radioactivity in them. From Chernobyl, the other side of the world. But we have to be careful how much, how much fish we eat, which is a really healthy thing. If you really think about what fish can do for your, uh, your bodies biologically. But at the same time, it's full of PCBs and mercury contamination. And so you got to care, be careful how much you eat nowadays. Our ancestors didn't have to really worry about PCDs. You know, for them it was very healthy. They had a very good relationship. But the disrespect that we as humans showed these animals and these plants because of our activities, our human activities, have contaminated these for generations to come. So we got to be careful. Yes, decolonizing because of that. Where is it taking place? Well, we've operationalized the location to be the Great Lakes region. The Great Lakes region it has a three-part <coughs> definition. The Great Lakes Basin, the principal theater, and also a vernacular region. What people commonly think of as the Great Lakes region. It's housed in the Center for Native American Studies at Northern Michigan University, and we're doing it everywhere. The 25 research subjects are doing it in their homes. Just like you all would go home and eat, we would want people to be able to eat this way commonly. That's one of the goals. Here's our region. And we picked this region. And it, you know what's really funny is if you ever study Tecumseh, one of my cultural heroes, hopefully yours too. But Tecumseh, his region that he was trying to make Indian territory, you know, for all Indian people, roughly this same area. That's just cool. You know, I feel like I'm connected to Tecumseh somehow through this. And large, largely the same philosophy too, trying to get the best of what our cultures offered us. We have 25 research subjects, all volunteers, we didn't coerce them in any way, uh, we didn't threaten them, uh, but we, uh, you know, these are people who volunteered and they have come to a number of gatherings now, they've consented to the study. People who did, were not selected, uh, for the study can still follow along. We have a blog site, we have a group site, we have a lot of information out there. Our master food list, which can help us identify the plants uh, initially. You know, this is all available for you to look at, to uh, give us feedback if you think that there should be some things in there that aren't in there, or things that are in there that shouldn't be in there, because that's happened too. These are our staff workers. Uh, myself, April Lynn, Latina Moses, we have three student uh, interns, this is it. So when you see all this work that gets done, we're pretty uh, busy people. Plus, this is only a part-time gig. We also all have full-time jobs. We have some advisors working with us, uh, some external advisors, uh, Dr. Devin Maihisua from Kansas State, Jim St. Arnold from the Great Lakes region. Uh, on campus, we have Chris Kibbett, Steve the Goosh, Moy Maffey, who's retiring. We're going to need someone else in nutrition and exercise. Our Michael Broadway, Alan Robertus, and Ken Kawanaqua, who is our Anishinaabe language. Here's our timetable. We started in November of 2010. That tells you how long we've been gearing up for this. Uh, we're just now started the implementation in spring of 2012. 
Uh, we're going to go to spring of 2013, one year study. Uh, starting in the spring of 2013 to the summer of 2014, that's when we're doing our analysis and reporting. So we're going to have some film, some recipe book, we're going to make a text, some articles. We're really going to do it upright. How will people find their food? Hunting, fishing, gathering, foraging, gardening, purchasing, trading, and sharing. And I want to stop on sharing because that's so important for us as Anishinaabe people. We forget about how did we eat culturally. We had a reciprocity. You know, not just between human and human. We didn't give to people so that we could get back. We gave to people because they needed it. And we got back when we needed it. Uh, we're also developing a food list or a master list for food distributors who uh, locally, we're kind of starting locally and uh, emanating out from the Marquette area. And so we're going to have online sources and everything else. But we're going to try to find who supplies these types of foods on the market. And not only food, but seeds. And USDA is a great resource, the National Repository, Germplasm Center, the National Arboretum. You know, they help you identify seeds that are more local and then provide you, they're providing us anyway, with a number of seeds. We're also recruiting consultants. And so one of the reasons I wanted to talk with you all today is because we are now looking for consultants from the communities to help us. And you'll be paid, uh, consultants, and so you know, we're going to be looking for, help us identify these plants and animals and uh, do this in a good way. If you want to follow along with us, see what we're doing, or participate, uh, that's our blog site on top. That's our group site, which has the master food list. We have a Facebook site. We also have a Flickr site that has a lot of photos. That we're taking photos of the foods that we're making and how we're going out hunting and stuff. So uh, the best one for you to write down if you're in a hurry is decolonizingdietproject.blogspot.com because if you go to that one, you can link to all these other ones. If you ever have a question about the DDP, there's my contact information, mryanhar at nmu.edu, and that's the number for the Center for Native American Studies. helps it to keep it from getting root bound so that it will spread out. Do you smell that medicine? Yeah. You guys smell that? That's good.